genocide prevention is strategic. Uh, it is in that realm. It is not confined uh, to a border only, to a region only. It is an engagement of humanity. Countries like uh, Canada and others are nowhere near uh, moving to their potential to, uh, one, respond, and two, to prevent. There are many countries at risk of mass atrocity crimes, actually many more than, we, than we'd like to believe. And, and what's scary about that is that our governments have not been able to really move forward and actually prevent these atrocities. They haven't even really begun to think how to do that. So our conference uh, aims to kind of fill that gap, fill a niche, to do its first training program in the world that would bring people together to learn about all the early warning signs, to bring together all these different experts. The MIGS professional training program on mass atrocity prevention gave us the opportunity to take practitioners who work in very closely related areas, the opportunity to come in from the field, share their experiences with us, and give us an interface to transmit to them the, w the methods that we use that are tested and based on the lessons we've learned. Governments have done next to nothing to build capacity within their institutions to prevent mass atrocity crimes. And what happens is that we tend to do nothing or wait to the last minute and send in the military. A general who knows only how to fight is useless in this era because that is the last resort that nobody really wants to go to. And so what we need is that the ability to use discipline force is there to protect in extremists, but there's a whole raft of other options that can be used. All of us uh, in our respective roles in the society and also in our governments, in our organizations, all of us have a duty, a responsibility, and we can do something to prevent mass atrocities in different ways, but all of us can do something. I am arguing that we must create, innovate, and in fact produce a whole new generation of leadership that is multidisciplinary to be able to handle the new lexicon that we are going to be having to articulate and define into the future. I think this training is a really positive example of how an organization and a university can do something that's really quite progressive and forward thinking to try to move this agenda forward. There's nothing like this that has been tried anywhere in the world and to bring together not just policymakers but also individuals who are working on these issues within academia, within civil society, I think a pretty revolutionary uh, endeavor. What I hope will result from these professional training workshops is a network of practitioners out there in the field who have acquired some of the wisdom that we can share with them and then continue to help us learn lessons as their experiences deepen and broaden. We now have people who are much keener observers today than they were before the training program. They know what to look for, they know what signals to look for, and they also know how to report back to their superiors in effective ways. And for us, that means much more genocide prevention using diplomacy, development aid, and if necessary, force. We are not in an exercise that we hope to solve in 30, 40 years. We must have a sense of urgency in regards to going to the source of the rage, be it massive poverty, be it abuse of power, be it human rights, use those parameters, be it resources, be it survival. We are in, a, in an era that I believe requires that sense of urgency, and I'm not convinced uh, that we have it. And the sense of urgency is not trying to build our fortresses here. The sense of urgency is going to attenuate the rage there, and ultimately those frictions not fall into conflict, but actually we participate in preventing them. Thank you very much.